look at one another, even tomorrow, tomorrow is Sunday, Sunday morning, right? When you see yeah. the saints coming together, you can say, hi, brother priest, or hello, <laughs> sister priest. Good morning, yeah. brother priest. So good to see you this morning. The saints may look at you and say, what? <laughs> brother priest. <laughs> and you have to say, that's right. I'm only being biblical. <laughs> you are a priest. I am a priest. Together, we're part of a royal priesthood. Okay, I spent a long time on that because we all have a concept when we hear the word priest. And we need to realize that our concept is just not what the Bible talks about. It is not a gift to be a priest. It is just who you are. It's who you are as a believer. Uh, second thing, I said there's three things about priests being a priesthood. First thing, it's not a gift. The second thing that uh, is that being a priest is to God on behalf of, of other people. To God on behalf of men. Uh, as a priest, you need to realize that God is the first priority. And this is true. We can see that all the way back in Exodus chapter 28. And, you know, we're going to look a little bit at some aspects of the priesthood in Exodus chapter 28 a, a little bit later. But in chapter 28, this is when God, well, God desired that all of his people would be priests. Um, they failed. They worshipped a golden calf. And then through that failure, eventually the tribe of Levi was chosen to serve God as priests. And uh, but uh, when God began to call them. He told Moses to bring near to him Aaron, his brother, and his sons with him from among the people of Israel to serve me as priests. You know what the first priority of a priest is? God. To serve God. Not to serve man. Not to serve the church. Take me rightly. Not to serve the needs of people, but to serve God. That's the first priority that a priest has. A priest is called by God to serve God. So you, as a priest, you have to say, okay, God is my number one priority. But when we look at the picture of the priests in the Old Testament, it's, we realize very quickly that priests are serving God yet on behalf of men, on behalf of people. And this is what makes a priest's life so romantic, <laughs> so rich. Uh, so exciting, uh, because this is what God desires. He desires priests that serve him, with him in view, but on behalf of other people. Uh, you know, recently, uh, my second child was born. So just a couple of months ago, my son was born. Uh, when I was with you all last summer, I only had one child. Now I have two. Can you believe it? My family is growing. Um, and, you know, my son has never asked me if it's okay for him to cry. He doesn't say, Daddy, can I cry now? <laughs> he doesn't say, Daddy, have you had enough sleep? If not, he doesn't say, Daddy, then you can go back to sleep and take care of me later. No way. Brother Shim, you've had children, right? You have sons. Have you, did your sons ever say that to you? Did they ever say, Daddy, do you, have you had enough rest? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I can say this to all the parents on the screen. Did your children ever ask you if it was okay to start crying? No. <laughs> you know, when you live to God on behalf of man, there are just so many things happening around us. Um, that make that it's not like your life can be so like uh, set. You can't say like, oh, three to four p.m. is the crying time, and then four to five p.m. that's the whatever time, and then five to six p.m. that's the whatever time. But on behalf of men means that there are just so many things that happen in people's lives, and they need to be brought to God, and God needs to be brought to them. And it's not on a schedule, but it's just as human life is happening, as people's lives are happening, then there is a someone called a priest who can bring them to God and can bring God to them. 
You know, the first priority of a priest is God. And yet it's God to serve God, but on behalf of men. And that makes a priest's life very exciting. <clears throat> and we'll talk, maybe, maybe we'll get there to talk more about that. The third thing I wanted to mention, number one, it's not a gift. Number two, to God on behalf of man. And then number three, the third thing I wanted to mention is that this verse doesn't say you're royal priests. It doesn't say that you're a royal priest. It says that you're a royal priesthood. A priesthood. What's the difference between a priest and a priesthood? You know what the difference is? The difference is that a priesthood are many priests who are together. You're not just an individual priest out on your own, trying to serve God on your own as an individual in the midst of, in the, midst of the world. But God desires his people to be a priest hood, <laughs> to be priests together, to be standing together. That's why I love to see some of the screens. I see multiple saints on the screens because I feel like when you see the saints who are together, you see something of a priest hood, you know, to brothers in Davao City in the church in Davao City, you know, you can look at one another and you can say, hey, brother priest, you're, we are a priest hood. <laughs> You know, you can even put your arms around each other. Go ahead. You can put your arms around each other. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, saints. Do you see that priesthood? Oh, wow. It's so sweet. It's marvelous. <laughs> you really see not just individuals, but actually it's a corporate uh, experience. Many individuals yet together in something called a priesthood. Uh, in the U.S., we have um, things called neighbors. Do you have neighbors in, in, in the Philippines? The people who live next door to you, right? And then in the U.S., we also have things called neighborhoods. What's the difference between a neighbor and a neighborhood? A neighbor is an individual who lives next to you, right? But a neighborhood is a collection, usually a collection of houses that are together in the same area. And then they're defined by sharing something together. Uh, so a neighborhood, for, for example, I live in a neighborhood in the city that I live in. That means that there's a collection of houses in the general area that I live in that are thought of together. And in the same way, you're not just a priest, you're part of a priesthood. <laughs> you don't just have neighbors next to you, you're part of a neighborhood except it's not a neighborhood, it's a priesthood. So you, you're, you, we have to learn how to say, I'm a priest. That's the first point. It's not a gift. I'm a priest. Second is I'm for God on behalf of others. And then the third thing is, oh, I have brothers next to me, or I have sisters next to me. And together we're part of a priesthood. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? You have to say, wow, I'm so glad what God has put me into. Uh, brothers, Church in Davao City, I see you. Can you can you unmute? Can you say this with me? Number one, I'm a priest. And can you like do this? I'm a priest. I'm a priest. I'm a priest. Yeah. Now can you say, I'm a priest for God? <laughs> I am a priest for God. Yeah. For God on behalf of others. For God on behalf of others. Yeah. Now you have to say, I'm part of a priesthood. <laughs> I am a part of a priesthood. Yeah. And you can put your arms around each other. You can say, I'm part of a priesthood. <laughs> I'm, part I'm part of a priesthood. Yeah. And then all the rest of us, we're on mute right now, but we should all say, Amen. And you should realize it's you too. I'm just talking to the church in Davao City because I can see them on the screen right now. But if I could see you on the screen, I might Amen. talk to you. <laughs> Amen. It's Amen. not just them. It's you. Okay. You are a priest. You are for God on behalf of others. And you are part of a priesthood.